what's up guys welcome back i'm so excited for today's video it's going to be really fun because i'm kind of merging two of my favorite videos that i like to do here on my channel first is showing you guys my everyday makeup looks those are probably some of my favorite tutorials to show you because they're some of my favorite looks to do and also combining it with my calming makeup tutorial style that I often do here on my channel where I kind of show you guys how I apply my makeup in a little bit more of a close-up cinematic slow motion and kind of calming way so I decided to show you guys my current everyday makeup routine and also what is currently inside my everyday makeup bag so my everyday routine changes constantly i never really have the same routine even week to week i'm constantly moving products in and out of my makeup bag and i'm constantly changing things up so the look that's on my face right now is the look that i've been wearing every day lately but we're going to start from the beginning so let's rewind a little bit so the first thing that I like to do before any makeup application is, of course, to moisturize my skin. Um, today, I used the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. This is a really nice one for underneath makeup because it's very, very lightweight and gel-like. It's not too rich or almost overly moisturizing. It really just keeps it nice and simple, just adds a nice base for your foundation to sit on. Um, this isn't necessarily my favorite go-to everyday moisturizer. It's kind of just what I had next to me. Typically, I'll just use the moisturizer that I'm using at the moment and right now I am using the skin fix moisturizer but because I did use that already at the beginning of the day I did want to use something just a little bit more lightweight because my skin didn't need like all that moisture right before applying this makeup so this is what I put on all over my face before starting as far as primer goes I'm always on and off I don't always use a primer in my routine and lately I haven't so there's just no primer in, in this makeup routine I really just focus on keeping my skin nice and moisturized and a moisturizer does that perfectly so now moving on to the current foundations that I'm keeping in my makeup bag I have basically three always at all times I always like to have something more medium to full coverage um, more of like a light coverage tint moisturizer and then something that is really really light coverage so depending on my mood I know that I have it right here in my bag ready to go Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. This is a foundation that I always find myself circling back to. It's something that I often will re-implement into my routine after, you know, a couple months. Like, I'll get tired of it, but I'll always come back to it just because I know it's a foundation that really works very, very well for my skin. It has medium to full coverage. It's not heavy. It lasts really well throughout the day. And the shade that I have also matches me pretty much perfectly when I'm at this level of skin tone, which is typically in the winter time. The shade is Warm Sand 2.5. The two other foundations that I keep in here, just in case I want something a little bit more lightweight, are the Smashbox Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer, and I use the shade Light Neutral. And then I also have the M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion, and this one is in the shade Gentle Light Light Medium. The Smashbox Tinted Moisturizer is so beautiful. It gives such a good glow to the skin, and it does really perfect it, but while still being obviously really nice and lightweight, you guys know, like, I will not put a foundation on my face if it's not lightweight and natural looking. So this really has just been perfect for those light coverage days. And then when I really want something very, very minimal, the M Cosmetics cushion is perfect. This doesn't really give a ton of coverage, but it gives just enough to feel covered. I actually will often use this little cushion in here to apply it. I won't even use a brush. And so it's just like a really nice all-in-one compact. My concealer is the one product that I have really intense phases with. I'll fall in love with one concealer and I won't really deviate from it for a really long time. For a while, it was the Rare Beauty concealer and I still love that and I still go back to it often, but there was a point in time where I would not touch anything else. And then after that, I was using the Joes Maron Vibrancy. And then lately, I have definitely been back in love with the Kosas concealer. This is a beautiful, very, very hydrating concealer. This is essentially like an eye cream and a concealer had a baby. So if you have dry under eyes, this stuff is fantastic. And lately my skin underneath my eyes has been feeling a little bit more on the drier side, which is why I have been gravitating towards this guy because I do feel like it, it always looks flattering underneath my eyes, no matter what dryness I have there.
So to create really long wearing blush and bronzer looks, I've been loving layering creams with powders. I really love creams, as you guys know, I feel like I'm a huge proponent of cream makeup because it's so natural looking on the skin and I love using creams on their own for that reason because they just look so dewy and fresh, but at the same time, they don't last a long time on the face. It depends on the formula, but most formulas fade fairly quickly. It's kind of just the nature of using a cream. And so a good way to create a really long wearing blush or bronzer look is to layer a cream underneath a powder because that powder is really good to lock it in. Now I always try to avoid setting my creams with their corresponding powders as much as possible just because I didn't want to get rid of that nice, glowy, fresh look. But I find that if I use just a really, really small amount of powder, I don't totally lose that glow or that nice freshness that the cream provides. Um, and it doesn't completely like mattify my face. It just locks it in enough so that it just lasts a really long time and even longer than if I were to just use a powder on its own. So with that being said, I have found a new cream bronzer love. I'm so excited to tell you guys about this. I feel like this is a pretty underrated product. I haven't heard too many people talk about this. I'm actually doing a lot of research right now for a cream bronzer showdown part two video that I'm planning. And I purchased so many different types of cream bronzers and blushes to test out. So stay on the lookout for that video because it's gonna be coming soon through that whole testing process, I pretty much fell in love with the Tarte Breezy Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. Or is it the Seychelles Bronzer in Breezy? I'm not 100% sure. So this is a bit of a spoiler alert, but I, I, I can't hide my love for this any longer. It's just so good and I haven't been able to stop using it over the last couple of weeks. What I really love about this formula is that it is a little bit on the stiffer side. And I've definitely noticed through trying so many different types of creams that I do prefer those cream bronzers that are on the stiffer side because I just find, again, that they just last a little bit longer. Besides that, it blends really well. It's a nice buildable formula. So I do feel like I can sometimes get something more intense or more sheer down just depending on how I wanna build it up. And then the color is beautiful. It's a really nice, rich, more neutral toned, maybe leaning a little bit on the red side that I just feel like is really flattering for my skin tone. So after I apply my cream bronzer, I go in with my cream blush. I don't set my bronzer just yet. I do kind of like to have all my creams laid down before I start putting any powder on my face. I just feel like it makes the most sense that way. This blush is definitely very fancy and I did purchase this specifically again for that cream showdown video because I really wanted to see if it was worth its insane price tag. I think that this is maybe around 70 or $80, which is, so ridiculous, especially for a cream blush. And I'm gonna tell you right away, I don't think it's worth this price. However, <laughs> I can't help but just really love this blush. And I mean, I purchased it, so I'm gonna use it. So this is the Kajir. I think that's how you say the first name. I keep on forgetting how to pronounce it, but I think it's Kajir Weiss Cream Blush in the shade Sun Touched. And I bought this shade in particular because I thought that it would be a really beautiful sunburnt blushy shade because those are really some of my favorite shades to wear in a cream formula because it just gives you that I was just in a sun type of look which is so beautiful. Besides all of that, this is a very easy blush to work with. I use it pretty much exclusively with my fingers. I just go in from the pen to my cheeks and it blends and melts into the skin with pretty much zero effort. The Wet n Wild blushes are some of my favorite drugstore blushes, and this particular color, Mellow Wine, has been one of my favorite blush shades for a really, really, really long time. Like This is basically the powder version of this cream blush. You can see it's pretty much almost the exact same tone, which is amazing. So again, even though I'm layering this on top of the cream, it's not changing that beautiful color that I love so much. It's really just doing what I want, which is setting it in place. I have completely fallen in love with the Quo Beauty uh, bronzing powder in the shade Cool Contour. I don't know why they call this Cool Contour because this isn't like a very cool toned bronzer, but it's definitely a really, really good 
mm, slightly more neutral bronzing powder. I actually feel like it matches the Tarte bronzer not like absolutely perfectly, but they're very, very close to one another, which is why I've been really enjoying layering these two on top of each other because I don't feel like it shifts the color in any way. But what makes this bronzer so fantastic, you guys, is the smoothness. It's like velvet. You touch this and you're like, is this a bronzing powder or is this heaven on earth? I don't know. This is my Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder. This is a loose powder. Um, this one is in the shade Light One, which does have a little bit of like a pinky undertone. It's not super pink, but there is that pink undertone there. Um, it's really funny because when I first tried this powder, I didn't love it. I actually don't think it, it blew me out of the water at all. But recently I rediscovered it in my collection. I tried it out again and I completely fell in love with it and it's been the only powder that I've been using on my face for the last couple of weeks. This powder does the most amazing job in blurring, smoothing, and just making your skin look like it's literally facetuned. It's insane. It also does a really good job of brightening up the face a little bit because this is more of like a lighter powder and because it has that slight pinkier undertone, it does give that little bit of brightness that I think is just really nice and flattering. And so I've been putting this underneath my eyes, on my nose, on my forehead, on the sides of my nose, and or kind of around my mouth chin area. I do like to set pretty heavily around this area because that's where my mask goes and so I want my foundation and everything that's there to be set down. I just really like a powder that makes my skin look you know? So moving on to the eyes, when it comes to everyday eye makeup, it's almost always very, very simple. I don't like anything more than four steps on the eyes. Even four is kind of pushing it. I'd rather be like a good three-step routine. I feel like that's a nice sweet spot. But lately, the little spice that I've been adding to my everyday routine is using pink tones on my eyes. Um, they're not like super crazy intense pink tones, but it's that little hint of pink that I feel like just adds something a little bit different to my eye look than what I typically do, which is like browns. So I have been loving using these two guys on my eyes. This is the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadow in the shade Rose, as well as the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Rose Decadence Palette. So let me first start off first with this cream eyeshadow. This is such an easy cream eyeshadow to wear. I know a lot of the times cream eyeshadow can be kind of intimidating and somewhat difficult to work with, especially if it's not the right formula. Um, I really love cream eyeshadow because it's a great one and done type of product. And especially when it comes to every day, I do really like the simplicity of just putting one product on my eye and kind of being done with it. This does have kind of a soft matte finish to it. It's not a super sticky or creamy texture. And because of that texture, it just is so easy to blend out and to just quickly kind of buff onto the eye. And then I also put a little bit of the cream shadow underneath my eye as well, just to create a nice all around eyeshadow look. There are some days where I just leave the cream shadow as is and I don't put anything on top, but it does also act as a really good eyeshadow base. And I do sometimes like to layer a little bit of something extra on top if I am feeling a little bit extra for the day. And so today, as you guys saw, I used a little bit of pink eyeshadow. Now, I kind of just pulled this out of my collection one day and haven't stopped using it since. So what I did today is I took this light pink shade and I put it all over my lid and it just gives a really nice pinky glow. And then I put a little bit of the dark purpley pink shade just right on the outer corner of my eye, kind of in place of a liquid eyeliner to just elongate and lift my eyes. I do have a liquid eyeliner in my makeup bag. This is my Benefit Roller Lash. This has been my current favorite liquid eyeliner. It's super black and it's also really easy to apply because it comes to a pretty nice and precise point. Now I've been a bit of a mascara whore lately, just a little bit. I have a bunch of mascaras in my makeup bag unnecessarily. Honestly, I don't need four mascaras in here, but they're just ones that I, that I like to circle between and just depending on kind of what I'm feeling. So today I did use the Benefit Roller Lash. I love this so much because it gives such a nice lift to the lashes and it defines and volumizes and gives so much 
drama but natural drama to the lashes and this is probably my my most used as of late and for my lower lashes i've been using the mac extended play giga black lash mascara now i was never really a person who would use a separate mascara for my lower lashes. Randomly, I just started doing that and I started using this mascara on my lower lashes and I've been really liking it because it's a really long and skinny wand and so it's really easy to get nice defined lashes without it getting everywhere. Then I have my Dior Dior Show Iconic Overcurl, which is a very, very dramatic mascara. This is kind of like the Benefit Roller Lash, but on steroids. So if I want a really dramatic lash look, I go with this. And then of course I have my M Cosmetics Pick Me Up. This is a tubing mascara. I typically like to wear this on the days that I'm wearing very minimal makeup or I'm in a quick makeup mood because this is a really easy mascara to remove. It is a tubing mascara and tubing mascaras remove with just water. And for whatever reason, if I am going for more of like a minimal makeup look, I want my removal routine to also be easy and quick, and so I go for something like this. For my brows, I'm still loving and using the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. I've been talking your ears off about this, so I'm not gonna go on and on, but this is essentially just a very precise filling and thickening brow gel. This has a really, really small wand and it basically just fills in and thickens your brows at the same time. It's quick, it's easy, it gets the job done, and it takes me two minutes to do and it makes my brows look groomed and finished without me having to put a pencil or a powder to my brow. So I love it. It's just so quick and easy. At the end of my makeup application, I actually forgot to apply my highlighter. I would have typically applied this when I was applying all of my creams, but it kind of just escaped me. This is my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is such a gorgeous glow from within highlighter and for day to day i really don't want anything super intense and you can see on my cheekbones right now it just gives a really nice soft glow to the face My lip products. My lip products are constantly changing just depending on the kind of vibe that I'm feeling in that particular moment. Lately, I have been enjoying more of like these darker nudes and I also have an orangey shade too. So the two liners that I have in here are the Makeup Forever uh, Artist Color Pencil in the shade Limitless Brown, which is a really nice cool tone deep brown. That's what I use today. And then I also have this Nabla Close Up Lip Shaper in the shade number two, and this is more of a medium toned nude, but it's not as deep as Limitless Brown. So I have these two options over here. On my lips today, I'm wearing my Tower 28 Gloss in Cashew. I've been having a love affair with this gloss ever since it first graced my lips. I haven't been able to stop using it. This has probably been my favorite uh, everyday gloss for a couple months now. Like I keep going back to it. It's just so glossy and comfortable. The color is perfect. It's that really beautiful, deep, neutral-ish neutral shade <laughs> and I just find it really flattering and I think it works really really well with Limitless Brown. They match each other perfectly. Then I have a slip shine lipstick here from Fenty. This is in the shade Makeout Break and it's a really pretty light nude. It's very very shiny and super flattering on the lips. And then last but not least I have my M Cosmetics uh, what are you called? Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer and Faded Clementine. This is another just really really glossy gorgeous cushiony lip formula in this amazing kind of like toasted pumpkin shade how beautiful is that all right guys that is it that is everything that i've been keeping lately in my everyday makeup bag i hope that you enjoyed seeing what I kept in here and also how I like to apply it. I would love to do a video like this in this style, maybe monthly. I feel like it could be really fun just kind of diving into my everyday makeup bag and showing you what it looks like in action. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it. And of course, subscribe if you want to join the fam. And that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.